All right, we are still um, talking about worms. Um, we're actually talking about my second favorite of the worms, and that is Enterobius vermicularis, or pinworm. Most people have heard of pinworm. Hopefully most of you have not experienced pinworm. I'm told it is very, very unpleasant. So what is pinworm? Pinworm is a small white worm um, and it is familiar to parents who find them in the perianal folds or vagina of an infected child. That's right, this is another one that we just see run rampant through daycare centers and those small humans who are just, you know, harbingers of disease in our lives. Um, so what are the forms? First off, diagnostic form, you're looking for the eggs on the perianal or vaginal folds. Um, infective form is the embryonated egg. The eggs actually mature very rapidly and therefore are infectious within hours. Um, where are we gonna find them? Everywhere. Any, everyone is susceptible to pinworm. No one is safe. Um, and particularly, where do we find them? Kids, why? Kids are so bad at washing your hands. If you have kids, just like watch them like a hawk while they wash their hands. It's the biggest thing you can do to protect them, yourself, and others. Okay, so how does this work? Um, first off, you ingest the eggs, and that leads to production of the larval worm in the intestinal mucosa. The eggs are transmitted from hand to mouth. So basically, kid is scratching, kid is biting nails, kid is scratching, kid plays with the top of their straw, takes a drink, look at that, excellent infection. Um, the eggs are transmitted all over the place in um, daycare centers and areas where children gather. Um, and basically what happens is that the eggs then eventually migrate to the areas of the um, perianal folds and the vagina, and that leads to irritation because these migrating eggs are moving and it is so, so itchy, like very, very pruritic. And because of that, what we're going to see is basically just that it's so itchy, the kids can't sleep, so they become fatigued, they become irritable because it's, I mean, it's itchier than chicken pox, I'm told. It's just constant as these things are moving around. Um, occasionally, worms attach to the bowel and might cause some inflammation and granuloma formation around the eggs. Um, and adult worms can also invade the appendix. So sometimes we'll see um, that as a potential problem. So those are the main thing. Really, it's just a itchy, itchy thing. Um, how are we gonna diagnose it? Um, typically, you can diagnose it kind of just by the intense pruritus and then confirmed detection of the characteristic eggs on the anal mucosa. So how are you going to detect the eggs on the anal mucosa? And this one is actually a kind of genius one that is just kind of stuck forever. It's called the tape test, literally scotch tape. So basically, um, you place some tape along a paddle tongue dispenser, something like that, okay? Exposing the sticky side, okay? So you might wanna use some double-sided tape here, okay? The tough sticky side um, of the tape needs to be touched to the anal region several times. So you're literally just taking a stick with a piece of tape on it, and you're kind of just going like dip, 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 like all around, okay? And when you do that, you can then take the tape stick it to a slide and look under a microscope and visualize the eggs and sometimes the worm. Um, always do this immediately in the morning, like right after a child wakes up. That's when you're likely to see the most. Why? It's probably the longest they've gone without going to the restroom. So in that case, you probably got the most, um, the most concentration of worms there. All right, what are you gonna do for this? Um, albendazole or mebendazole tends to be the drug of choice. In this case, you're going to treat the whole family because it's so common that kid is itchy, mom or dad goes to take care of kid, is taking care of kid, whatever, and then you treat the kid and two days later, mom or dad is laying in bed and going, Oh no, and then they've got it too. So go ahead, treat the whole family. Then, here's the rub, you need to wait two weeks and then treat again because the life cycle is such that to just be certain that you're avoiding reinfection, you wanna make sure that you're getting that second wave of potential develop. So um, treat, treat the whole family, and then treat them again. 